go to the evening program for Bhagavad Gita class, take prasadam. One night, Kirtanananda came. Convinced to the park or the temple? Kirtanananda, he, he was traveling. Mm -hmm. He was plucking devotees from temples, oh. literally. So he convinced both of us very easily, come to New Vrindavan. And that's what we did. We went to the temple every day for a week, and then we left Philadelphia on a train, went to Pittsburgh. We stayed in the Pittsburgh temple for a little bit, uh, shaved our heads, first day in the temple. I became the temple commander the second day I was there, you know, in <laughs> Pittsburgh. And we went on from there. So that was my beginning experience. Mm. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> And so, but, you know, what was going on was the, even though you, I didn't meet Srila Prabhupada personally for three months, everything was about Srila Prabhupada in those days in the temple. Wow. Every day you would hear Prabhupada's traveling here now, Prabhupada did this, Prabhupada said that. All the, all the activity and the enthusiasm that was going on was because of Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Whatever different nuances were there in different temples, right? It was always Prabhupada. Prabhupada said this. Prabhupada does this. You know, there was one, we quickly went to New Vrindavan, so now it's May 1971. So Prabhupada, where did he go? He went to Russia. Mm -hmm. So we would hear Prabhupada's in Russia. There's little no vegetables, no fruits, how everything difficult was. And then we heard a very interesting story about Prabhupada in Russia. So we were always, as, you know, as far as I can remember, it was about Prabhupada. And then as soon as I became his servant, I would write letters and send them to Kaladri in New Vrindavan. Prabhupada's doing this, Prabhupada said this, today this happened in Prabhupada's room. So our connection, our whole Krishna consciousness was Prabhupada, yeah, yeah. Prabhupada consciousness. Yeah, I, I would say the same, like my experience also, I was, as I mentioned, you're in Philadelphia, <clears throat> I'm in a little small town, Gary, Indiana. <laughs> so, never even heard of vegetarian. Mm -hmm, right. But uh, my brother, he got the books. Well, he was on his way to university, which to me was a shocker to see people dressed <laughs> like this. Yeah. You know, most people run to the other side of the street, you know, with these nuts, you know. Yeah. And then he brought the books on to me, and, we, and I read them, and it made perfect sense. So I was hungry for more, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, but then again, like I said, once I entered the temple, then you, you that's the first thing I noticed, too. Everybody was just... We have to do this for Prabhupada. He's trying to spread Krishna consciousness. He wants to satisfy his spiritual master. Mm -hmm. And you just, everybody caught that mood. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 yeah. yeah, even I, I wanted to mention this earlier, but I, in that mood, I wanted to please Prabhupada. I, I don't know why. I always thought somehow or another one day I would be Prabhupada's personal servant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It was just yeah. pride. But then after reading your book, Hari Sari's book, I went to the last 30 minutes. I, I had others say that. I one devotee, when I was in England, he, he said, I was always envious of you. I was too. I was. He said, but once I read your book, I realized I, I could never be. have done what you did. Be. I couldn't have done that. I would have committed suicide because I felt so, <laughs> you know, I didn't please prop, but I felt so let down, you know. Yeah. But, you know, the aspiration was there, and that really motivated me. I, let me do something to attract Prabhupada in such a way mm. that he will bump Shruti Kirti out <laughs> and replace me with Shruti Kirti. <laughs> Imagine how many people were thinking like that. They are cursing me <laughs> as Prabhupada's servant. Well, you know, Prabhupada made that competition, you know. I mean, he knew our spirit. Mm. So, you know, we're not pure devotees. Yeah. I, never, I never had a competitive attitude. Yeah, Christian just you took wanna, care of you. That's you why. Wanna, I'll tell you. You just fell in there. I just fe literally fell into it. I was in New Vrindavan, and in Bahulaban, Kirtan Ananda, he had like we said, the right hand and his left hand mm -hmm. man was Kaladri and me. How did that happen? You just moved there. You only been there. A week. I had, <laughs> see, I had. Well, you know, Kaladri was good, good manager. Yeah. 
Me, I, I was treasurer. I was good with numbers. But I also had, I had a, a quality that I kind of grew up with. I was very submissive. <laughs> Even um, Shaima Sundar, when I joined Prabhupada's mm -hmm. team, some years ago in New York, Shamas and we were at a Ra Theatre Festival, and he, you know, we saw each other after 20 years or mm -hmm. more, and he just laughed. He said, he said, when you became Prabhupada's servant, you were a blank slate. <laughs> in other words, whatever they said, I, I accepted. And if you want to know, see, growing up for me was, wasn't typical family. I was, you know, from a wouldn't even say middle class, a lower class family. My father died when I was three. Mm. So I had no, I had two older sisters and a mother, Italian. So all I learned was caretaking. Mm. I didn't learn masculine side of things. You know, the <laughs> guy going to work, coming home at the end of the day, drinking his beer, yeah, sitting, in front suffer, of, huh? <laughs> sitting in front of the TV. I didn't know any of those things. I learned how to take care, which I consider that's when I, you know, even when Kirtan Ananda, he, it was me or Kaladri, he decided shoot the Kirti will be Prabhupada's servant because mm -hmm. I was very submissive. That's what mm -hmm. I was, you know. I never argued, didn't like confrontation. You know, Prabhupada would yell at me. I never had, never would give an excuse. Why did you do like this? I never just, I couldn't. So that was, was actually a, a nice qualification for being a servant, a personal mm -hmm. servant, you know. You Just do shown, what I was told. I did, did you ever show them that you were maybe disappointed because you made Prabhupada upset? You know what I mean? Like it's, it was there. I mean, but you didn't, did you, you didn't show those things. You just you screamed at you. Just he, he would know. Of course he would know. Um, he had a way of dealing with that as well. He never, <laughs> can't say he would apologize for yelling, but he would bring you in and just tell stories. Oh. That's what he would do. That was Sue how he did. Because he had no reason to apologize. His business was to chastise. That's the mm -hmm. business. That's what he said. Guru's business is to chastise, to train his disciple. So it has to be there. You know, but, but I also, you know, I was with him two and a half years altogether. And, you know, and I say in two and a half years, he raised his voice. I say, we say yell four times in two and a half years. Oh. You know, I saw him do that four times in one afternoon with, <laughs> with his disciples. But I was with him. So he was conscious, you know. I mean, if you have, and I would say that sometimes to my God brothers when I would see them with their servants, I'd say, you know, you can't chastise them all the time. It's, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, and I explained it, and Prabhupada wasn't, wasn't like that, you know. You ha you have to adjust depending on the situation, the person you're with. It's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So he could bring somebody in his room, you know, sannyasi with temple press, and really give it to him, you know, maybe one day, next day, next day. But he's not going to do that with the person that's with him 24 hours a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my understanding. That's how I saw it. Otherwise, he could have been, every day, he could have found so many things I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Actually, I met a, uh, <clears throat> a devotee who, was clean, who cleaned Prabhupada's room. I think it was probably 72, 71. I won't mention the name. but And uh, they mentioned how Prabhupada chastised him while they were cleaning the room. Mm -hmm. And that devotee just started crying right in front of Prabhupada. Yeah. <laughs> and Prabhupada came up to the devotee and said, please forgive me, I'm just heavy by nature. <laughs> <laughs> and the devotee actually felt bad that Prabhupada had even said that to them. He, he had his moments. Yeah, know? yeah. But I mean, you know, I guess, especially for us who were, we would see him occasionally hardly ever right yeah so you're just in such awe it's it's kind of hard to deal with someone yeah when you're awe, how you know you well, have to serve them so it's you know again that's the first thing he did when i became his servant was help me relax by things that he said and things that he did like i guess he was very expert in dealing mm -hmm. and um you know i first i first met him when i went to henry street New York Henry Street 
literally three months to the day. It was July 22nd, 1971, when I got Hari Nam initiation, along with 10 of us every day for like 10 days, you know, which mm, was, at the lot. time, that was a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, not like thousands nowadays, but then that was a lot, every day. So we were there for four or five days, and... Um, you know, I just saw him in the temple room, Kirtan, no morning walks or anything like that. And then I didn't see him again until May of 1972, literally one year after I moved into a temple. And myself and Kaladri and if Kirtan Ananda and one or two others, we drove across country in a cargo van mm -hmm. to Los Angeles to get Brahmin initiation. So at that time, I actually, I got to go on a morning walk every day, and I got to go in the garden in the afternoon, just four or five of us in the garden, because I was with Kirtan Ananda, mm -hmm. you know, because I was with him, even though I was just, just this young, youngster guy, you know, from New Vrindavan, I was able to get Prabhupada's association. And that was when I first saw Prabhupada had a servant, and that was Nanda Kumar. Mm -hmm. So... I was so fascinated, even in the temple room, you know, and in Prabhupada's room, I would watch Nanda Kumar, and I thought, somebody serves? Imagine, just like, I never imagined, I never thought, I want to do that. I didn't <laughs> think that was, wasn't even in question, you know, it wasn't in the cards, it wasn't even a thought in my head. But I was so fascinated by Nanda Kumar grabbing his cane and giving him his glasses, you know, and the cup of water on the Vyasa sign and opening the Bhagavad, all these things, I was thinking, that's just amazing, you know? And I was so overwhelmed. I would watch him until finally one time Nanda Kumar looked at me because he saw me looking at him all the, and he gave me this look like, you know. Why are you looking at me? Yeah, why are you looking? <laughs> and that was it, I stopped. But I never thought, I want to be Prabhupada's servant. Mm -hmm. I had, I was in New Vrindavan. I was milking cows, mending fences, baling hay. You know, I went from Philadelphia. I never, even, I never even saw a cow growing up <laughs> to all of a sudden I was surrounded by them, you know. <laughs> so that was my experience. So then we got back to New Vrindavan. And now I was Brahmin. So immediately Kirtananda put me in the kitchen you know, I say, in charge of the kitchen, which means you're in the kitchen. There's nobody else in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's your place. And it was a farmhouse. No running water, no gas stove. We had woods, woods fired stove, things like that, you know. So it, was, it wasn't easy. But, did you know how to cook? Before well, that's what he did. He <laughs> trained me. You see, he trained me in cooking. <laughs> okay. So then, and I was upset because in August, then Prabhupada came for Jamastami festival. And because I was in the kitchen, I never got to go to any of the classes, none of the morning walks, none of the darshans, all the things I was doing in LA a few months before. So I was actually, I was upset, you know, and I was jealous of all my god brothers and god sisters because I thought Prabhupada's coming, I'm gonna to get to do, you know, be with him, but I wasn't with him at all. But I was in the kitchen so then the night before Prabhupada left, literally 8 o'clock at night, Kirtananda came into the kitchen, you know, with his cane, you know, and said, uh, so Sruta Kirti, you want to be Prabhupada's servant? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. So then the next morning, we went to Prabhupada's um, house, what do you call farmhouse, you know, the cottage, little one ground floor, one story little cottage. And Prabhupada was in his five in the morning. It's dark out. We go in and offer obeisances, and Prabhupada's sitting behind his desk with just the lamp, you know, what we'd use for translating. And we offered our obeisances, and Kirtanananda said, Prabhupada, this is Shruta Kirti. He's going to be your servant. Prabhupada had nothing to do with it, he didn't pick servants. He, whatever Krishna wanted, Prabhupada, pure devotee. He, he wasn't, I want this, I want. He didn't want anything. He just mm -hmm. wanted to serve Krishna. So Kirtananda said that. He's going to be your servant. And then he said, and Prabhupada looked at me and just went, hmm. <laughs> and then Kirtananda said, he's a very good cook, but he doesn't know how to massage. 
And Prabhupada said, anyone can massage. So that was the first thing he said, so that I wasn't in anxiety. Mm. Mm. The, uh, you mentioned earlier, I don't know if it was on the broadcast or before, that you also traveled with Kirtan Ananda on that first party that the visited. road show yeah the yeah. very famous road show yes and um so in that sense you got another taste of some other christian conscience besides being on the farm <laughs> <laughs> yes yes yeah of course you know we stayed on the road we left i don't know it could have been september october because okay, it was winter time so that was part of the road show was kirtan ananda leaving New Vrindavan for the winter. And, you know, we got four school buses. I think all got painted, pretty white and little gold and lettered Hare Krishna. So one bus was the temple room. And Radha Damodar, they, that was, they went into that bus. That's when Radha Damodar started. That was the beginning of Radha Damodar deities traveling. And one bus was the kitchen. And myself, and the friend that I joined with, Yadavananda, he was one of the cooks in the kitchen. He was the main cook. And then we had two other buses, one for the men and one for the ladies, the brahmacharinis, mm. as we called them back then, and one for the brahmacharis. And that was the road show. And it was very simple. Um, they would do little dramas. You know, Mangalananda was one of the main guys because he would play his guitar and had his songs already. And we would do the plays, Liquid Beauty, Bird in the Cage, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bookings were done by Tosan Krishna mm -hmm. and Narada Muni. They were the advance party. They would find bookings. And who knows what they told people about, <laughs> about this troop, mm -hmm. you know, this troop traveling around. But they had no idea it was going to be a bunch of Hare Krishnas, you know, but that's what it was. And we went to schools, sometimes grade schools, sometimes high schools. We did one thing in New Orleans in the underground in a, mm. a nightclub. I mean, anything they could book and get a few, whatever it was. I don't, I don't even know. Maybe it was $100, maybe mm -hmm. a couple hundred dollars, maybe less. And, uh, but we would have the program do dramas and then prashadam. And prashadam was always the same, the breadsticks. Mangala Nanda made these amazing breadsticks that we fried in ghee. Had wheat flour, white flour, rye flour, sesame seeds. I mean, they were just fantastic. And then we made barats back then, you know, the um, split pea, green split pea barats, you know, mm -hmm. grind them up, fry them, and put them in the breadsticks with tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. So they were a big, big hit. So we did that. We traveled here and there. In the South, which we were in many places very unwelcome, you know, we spe we we wound up in Alabama, which they didn't they didn't care for us Hari Krishnas at all, you know, and we got thrown in jail. We all got put in jail. They didn't know what to do with us because we were we would do Hari Nam in the streets. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they got you know the police grabbed us. It was a Sunday. They threw us all in jail. They were like like eight or ten of us in a cell together, all these men, you know. And uh, we were crazy back then, you know. We were devotees. And and uh, so this one, it was Sunday. So Sunday was what? Sunday. Love feast, <laughs> right? So we did a whole love feast, Muncie Seva. We did every, I was cooking. Oh, in the jail. In the jail. <laughs> So they're looking at us like we're totally out of our minds, you know, like we're cooking this and cooking the sweet rice, like everything we were learning in the Shastra, you know, like uh, putting the hand, getting our, you know, w waiting for our fingers <laughs> to get burnt, touching the sweet rice. And, and then um, they literally, they lined up and I served them all prashadam. But there wasn't anything there. It was all just in our minds. <laughs> so, so I think after that, they just let us out. They figured we were so crazy, you know. But that's how we were back then, right? We were, you know, we were, people were fascinated, you know. But So, yeah, we had, we had a feast all just in our minds, you know. Did you all make any devotees on their trips? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we did, yeah. Some, mm -hmm. some joined the troop and then, uh, you know. 
at that time, Kirtananda brought everybody back to New Vrindavan, you know, he would, I remember staying in Tampa, way back, you know, the winter of 71, you know, the winter time of 71, we, we stopped in Atlanta. I think but, in Atlanta at that time, did, were there some devotees preaching there at that time, or there was no one? Uh, you can remember that, that that we had our own Kirtananda. One of his specialties was going to um, born again Christian. Yeah, we would go like Sundays. We would go to these places, and mostly they were you know black congregation, mm -hmm. but they were a lot like us. You know, they'd sing and dance. You mm -hmm. know, and a lot of times they'd have these big black women. You know, and and they'd go talking the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues. Yeah, right. You know, talking <laughs> in tongues. That's what I was, before I became a devotee, I was going to them. That's what really? I wanted. I wanted that experience, but it didn't happen. Oh, okay. you know, I wasn't meant for that experience. But, and Kirtan Anand, whose father was Baptist minister, and he'd go in there, you know, and he'd do these fire, brimstone, Hare Krishna lectures and everything. And it was a lot of fun. It was really fun. I brought that up because uh, Balavanta, mm. he was at Emory University, I don't remember the exact year, and he mentions how he saw that party come through. Mm -hmm. And he was studying uh, philosophy and religion at Emory, against his parents' wishes, of course. Mm -hmm. And he had a professor who taught a class about Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. So he knew all about Lord Chaitanya before he even met the devotees. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, after he became a devotee, he said everything that professor said was actually true. He was a, he understood Vaishnavism. He wasn't a Mayavadi. Mm. And uh, and he mentions about Kirtanananda preaching in the churches, and then going back to Nuvendav, and and then they uh, he arranged for them to stay with him while they started Atlanta. Mm. So. In the, those days, Kirtanananda, because he was Swami and Maharaj, Kirtananda Maharaj. I traveled with him doing college preachings and things in the van. He was very austere back then. We would, you know, he trained me up in cooking. We would have kitri. That was it. Once a day we had kitri. And uh, he would go in all the you know, colleges and universities and everything and give, you know, very powerful lectures. You know. mm. He had one, I always remember one thing he would say that um, yoga means to link up. You know, if you look definition of yoga means to link up and religion religio latin word means to bind back so he would make the connection it is no difference you know everything of yoga religion whatever it is the whole point is to link up to god so you know he would say he was he was, he was very powerful mm -hmm. and in new vrindavan he you know we, our philosophy in New Vrindavan, see that's what I said, I don't know so much other temples, but our philosophy in New Vrindavan was we didn't read Bhagavad Gita, we were working Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, you know, that was the point. Was, we live Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, we right? live Bhagavad Gita, <laughs> yeah, right. We live Bhagavad Gita, and we, and we did, you know. I would read Krishna book during lunch. Everybody ate lunch, I would read Krishna book. And then in the evening, in the Brahmacharya Ashram, everybody laid down, and I would tell the story that I read at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. So, was, you know, we were just absorbed all the time, all the time. Anyway, so, <clears throat> um, I think this is more of a Sikimihiri's quest for more knowledge about <laughs> <laughs> the whys that occurred in those particular times of this con. Well, the expansion, like you say, the times I was with Prabhupada was probably the greatest, ex as he was traveling, he did more traveling in those years, 72, 73, 74, 75, then of course 77, hardly at all, yeah. 76. You know, that's when he his health declined. And traveling was not so much. So when I was with him, it was a very dynamic period. Yeah, money was coming in from the book sales, especially. Book, book sales were going Because before that, on. they were pretty much poor. What's he going to do? You know? when, 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 I, yeah, when I joined, our book distribution was BTG magazines. Yeah. You know, if you could get a quarter for a magazine, you were very happy. That was my specialty. Yeah. You could do 200 a day. We would, you know, <laughs> Harinam Sankirtan, after breakfast, 
you'd go out all day long. You didn't come into the evening, whether it was hot or cold. You know, we would go into streets in Pittsburgh while mm. I was there, I remember. You know, and everybody would tape up. The Murdunga players yeah. had to tape their fingers because there would be cracks all over the place from all day long. So people thought there were millions of Hare Krishnas, <laughs> even though there were just a few hundred. Yeah. We were, you know, you remember, we were in the TV, we were in the movies, we were everywhere. Yeah, the media, media loved us in a sense, not be, to promote us, but it, people would buy their magazines because they have something on the Hare Krishnas all the mm -hmm. time. <laughs> and Nuvrindabhan was, um, was the East Coast spiritual sky manufacturer. We would, they did the punks, yeah, punks is what we made incense with back then. I think it started there. It didn't start. He moved it later. Yeah. Because there's a, they a went fight to between LA. the teacher and Hill about who owned Spiritual Sky, I think, there, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, this was early on. So this was 71. So there was the East Coast, Los Angeles, and the, or, no, East Coast, New Vendorben did everything. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh was shipping out of Pittsburgh. They were shipping up and down the coast. Incense, packs of incense. You know, Strawberry Fields was the number one seller of incense. And then the, the, they would bottle the little oils. They weren't high quality things, mm -hmm. but you know people bought them. You know, it was temples were doing really well, mm -hmm. selling incense. You know, yeah. spiritual sky incense. Yeah, I think in Chicago mostly we just used it ourselves. <laughs> and, and then, and then when we went to Los Angeles, when I went there for Brahmin initiation, at that time the Krishna book was out, mm -hmm. volume one, the big. Maha, Silver, big book. Yeah. They were big. And in, in L.A., because a lot of people were coming, wherever Prabhupada went, people came from all over the U.S. We mm -hmm. came from the East Coast to Los Angeles. It took us, you know, four days to get there. So they would give each group of devotees uh, like a zip code in L.A. that you could work, you know. But, and at that time, me and my friend that I joined with, we would go door to door. That's how you did it. We weren't in the streets. We go door to door because we had the Krishna book, and that was such an easy sell if you went to the right house because you just turned to the page with George Amazing. Harrison, and that was it. And they look at the pictures, you know. You go to houses, you know, they'd be smelling pot, you know, and we were smoking <laughs> pot and stuff. So when they would see that stuff and all the out, pretty man. colorful pictures and George Harrison and Dor you know, love is all you need. And so, you know, that's the one and only time I was actually distributing books. Yeah. You guys were in your dotis? Yeah. Yeah. I was doty, shaved head. Yeah. There's no, hmm. you know, and it's just numbers. You know, you knock on so many doors every now and then you would sell a book. Hmm. And it was... Yeah, Chicago's a little harder. You couldn't go out in your dodi with books. <laughs> they would attack you yeah. pretty much. I joined right when they no, I, Carmi only, clothes. Only in New Vrindabhan, we didn't, we were, you know, we were farm boys. So we wore our jeans and it was muddy all the time. So we, we were in boots and jeans <laughs> so and nice shirts. Nice to put on a dodi every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Get out the mud. Only, only for Mongolarchi. <laughs> then we had to change into our... <laughs> Carmies or Carmi clothes. Mm. <clears throat> Anyways, uh... but it was so much about Prabhupada. See, when when I went to Nuvrindavan, which was like I say in May, it was always about Prabhupada. He mm. was our in constant inspiration, twenty four hours a day. So we were hearing, you know, we didn't know anything. You know, when I, when I became a devotee. You know, I went into the bathroom and I'm wondering, where's the toilet paper? You know, <laughs> nobody tells you. You just had to figure everything out. You know, there were no Bhakta programs. You just gradually figured out this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how things are going on. So you, you know, by word of mouth, you got an education. I remember in New Vrindavan, it was Bhakta Jeff, Bhakta Bill. Bhakta Jeff became Jamadagni. Mm -hmm. Bhakta Bill, I forget who he became, but. Um, you know, when I joined, I had my sleeping bag. You know, I left home with a little, tiny little suitcase with pants and shirts and a sleeping bag, you know. I didn't know what was up. No money, nothing. And uh, being, I was in the Brahma. Fortunately, Prabhupada was very kind to me. Krishna was very kind. My life in Brahmacharya Ashram didn't last long. I think maybe a week when I was in a Brahmacharya Ashram with like five, six other, you know, snoring boys, you know. <laughs> 
and I laid down at night, you know, and I just laid down and I was, I was lying on my stomach. And a devotee said to me, you know, you know, you're in Maya, you know, you're sleeping with Maya Devi. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know, but because I was on my stomach, I was apparently sleeping with this person, Maya Devi, you know. <laughs> so then I flipped over onto my back, you know, and another day I was, you know, this was, you're saying experience, this was my experience. We had a the guy in charge of spiritual sky, his name was Jatendriya. Mm -hmm. And he was married. He was a grahasta back then. And he was, a, you know, I was 19. I mean, he was maybe 23, 24, which was, it's already like a different lifetime, you know, when you're that age. And, uh, you know, him and his wife lived there. And I remember one day, you know, she was talking to me. And we were talking, you know, philosophy or just Krishna's. And, you know, Mamachari grabbed me, you know. It's, again, same thing, you know, you're, you're in Maya, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing talking to a woman, you know? <laughs> so that's what it was like, you know. Yeah, we were all trying to really figure it out. In a I sense. went to, when I, I went to New York, f July, I guess first time I went with Prabhupada, it was winter. It might have been big early 1973. Anyway, it's freezing. And, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning. And there's, you know, how many devotees? Temples were packed. So 4 in the morning, there's a line. You know, one bathroom was there. And it was like, temperature was freezing. And the windows in the bathroom were broken. You know, the hot water tap was pulled off, so you couldn't have any yeah. hot water. And people were in line to bathe, and they would literally go into the shower and chant one mantra under the freezing cold water, and then come out. You know, and you would, yeah. and you would take your turn. And you got broken windows, cold air coming in. You know, the the things we did were just people wouldn't do it. It would definitely be considered like you were, like a um, what do you call a. a um, Fanatic, <laughs> you know, yeah, You're like you were a war criminal. You know, oh, you, you yeah. were you were yeah, in the prison, a war, you know, prisoners prisoner of better, war. We were like better than us. Yeah, had it better. I mean, we would freeze in Los Angeles. I went there, New Dwarka, and in the morning, they just had a bin for the brahmacharis. So one guy washed that same that same laundromat still there, you know. Everything. Everybody was doing their laundry in that laundry. If we bought that thing, we could have made a, <laughs> saved a fortune on quarters, you know. But he'd wash it, and then in the morning, everything was thrown into one bin. We you didn't own anything. No. So the earlier you got up, the better you were dressed, you know. <laughs> I just say, my memory of Chicago is like that. Somebody might disagree with me, because I joined November 74. Yeah. And you mentioned no one tells you anything. Like, get up, get up, you gotta go to the yeah. Okay, okay, and everybody's in that line. I hear them screaming in the front. Screaming. Oh, get down, get down. What's going on? There's no hot water. They cut they saw the knob off. They yeah. didn't even take it off. It when, when we when we started in New Vrindavan, we had the milk house. Uh-huh. You know, where you bring in the big cans. So that had hot water in it. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were getting hot water until Kirtan Ananda found out, and boom, that was, that was the end of that, you know, that, that, but for a while we were enjoying hot. I don't know why people thought hot water was Maya. <laughs> I think back to that, why do we think Because <laughs> Prabhupada didn't take freezing cold showers. <laughs> no, 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 he, no, it wasn't, wasn't I think it's in him, nectar devotions. But he did, so it was already getting chillier. It was year? October to November 15th of 72. Uh -huh. So he went there for Kartik. So, you know, I was, I consider the 70s, we were like the second generation. You know, the first generation were the 60s. Yeah, they were the, like the third, not 74. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're in the third generation. <laughs> you know, that's how quickly things were changing. Yeah. And, and I saw them because everybody... When I was with Prabhupada, everybody I knew was almost 10 years older than me. Shaima Sundar, mm -hmm. Prajumna, Malati. You know, these were big, big people. Joined 66, 67, Brahmananda. Mm -hmm. No, I was, a, literally, I always felt like a kid amongst them. I never, mm -hmm. I never mixed with them. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, even with Shaima Sundar and Prajumda, they were on a different level. It's very formal in and, a sense. Yeah, and they joined at a different time when things were very different. There weren't any programs. There wasn't any regulation. There wasn't a Mongol artique, you know. Even 16 rounds wasn't necessarily <laughs> going on, you know. Things were a lot different. And their relationship with Prabhupada was very personal. Very, very personal. So we get to Vrindavan, and we're there a couple of days, and it's five in the morning, and Prabhupada rings his bell. I go in the room, offer obeisances, and he says, where are the others? The others were them, Prajumna Shaima Sundar, you know. You know, and I just look and I said, they're resting. He said, tell, bring them here, you know, call them, call them here. So we all go back in and offer obeisances. This is at Radha Damodar Temple. And we sit up and Prabhupada said, why are you sleeping? He said, um, getting up, rising early in the morning. He said, taking cold bath. He said, is not an austerity. He said, it's common sense. He said, it's good for your health. And then he said, doing these things, rising early, taking cold bath, chanting your 16 rounds. He said, if you do this for 12 years, everything you say will be perfect. Mm. <laughs> so that's what he said. That's what he said. But he, you know, so many times while I was with him, he would be calling people about sleeping. So that... A lot of that came from Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. You know, we if we slept more than six hours, again you're in Maya. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't go to Mangalarti, you're in Maya. These 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 were you know these Prabhupada made those regulations mm -hmm. pretty much himself. That brings up another thing. When you joined, I don't think they were singing the Guru Guru Ashram at that time, were they? Yeah, they did that. Yeah, we were doing that then. Yeah, I heard that was before they used to sing something else, and he added. Yeah. Those things later, you know, yeah. the, the more emphasis on... on I guru. don't know, remember, Guru Puja came a little later. Okay, they didn't have the Guru 71, I don't remember that, no. Probably they say it started... Probably after in, the, the incident. They st said it started in Juhu, Guru Puja was the first... Really? Yeah, the first you actual... You know that story? Why? So, um, no, I might have even been there for it. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, you know, Prabhupada again, and with, in Juhu, at that time was, you know, just a shed, tin roof, you know, the deities in a little, you know, half the size of this room, mm -hmm. you know, was, was the altar, Radha Rasa Bahari. And um, one day, Prabhupada's chanting Jai Radha Madhava before class. So he, you know, we all know how we do. It. We've heard it hundreds, hundreds of times, you know. And he's chanting, and he always played his cartels and chanted. And this devotee, this brahmachari, he's beating the drum. And Prabhupada didn't like, didn't like it because he wasn't following. So finally, because Prabhupada's chanting, and he just looks at me. Prabhupada could just with a look, he could tell you so many things. He looks at me, and he looked at him. <laughs> grab, grab that murdunga, you know, because, like he said once to one devotee, by same thing when he's leading kirtan mm -hmm. and and he's playing, but he's not following. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada said, first learn to follow, then you can lead, mm -hmm. which is a very, as many things Prabhupada said, very profound. You can take it so many different levels. When I became his servant. In New Vrindavan, I had no idea what I was doing. So, see, when I came, I told you, when I went to New Vrindavan, we heard about Prabhupada in Russia. And there was one story that went around, we all heard, because we would hear different things, whether it was Chicago, Detroit, L.A., New York. We all heard time, place, and circumstance, right? We all heard these things over and over and over again. And... Uh, we heard this story about Prabhupada in Russia. It was a Sunday. So finally, Shaima Sundar, and it was Aravinda, two of them were there. So they went out to try to get supplies, which literally they had to stand in line, and you could get what you could get. So that particular day, 
they managed to get rice, milk, and sugar. So they came back to Prabhupada's room and Prabhupada said, you know, wonderful, we'll make sweet rice. So they cooked up and made sweet rice. And then they poured it in the container, but it wasn't big enough. So Prabhupada said, put it into the lota. The lota was the bathroom. That was what Prabhupada used. And this lota traveled around the world, you know, with Prabhupada. But it was a spittoon. It was what he used in the bathroom. But he's saying, put it in the lota. And, you know, part of the story was time, place, and circumstance. Mm -hmm. See, this was Prabhupada's mood. And this was how to understand that phrase as well. You know, when to apply it, when not to apply it, you know. So anyway... I had heard that story so many times, Prabhupada in Russia, you know, time, place, and circumstance. We didn't even know what a lota was, mm -hmm. but we heard about the lota. So the day I became his servant, five o'clock in the morning, so after exchanging those, the first thing Prabhupada did is sitting at his desk, and he reached under the desk and he grabbed his lota. That was the lota. And he picked it up, and start walking out the door and he said, follow me. That was my very first instruction as his servant, follow me. Which again, I say, that's an eternal instruction. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was, right then, it was a very specific instruction, but it was my eternal instruction is follow me. And I followed him out the door and we went around 10 feet and then he said, wait here. I waited. I just stopped. Just stopped. And he went off into the bushes behind the tree. After a few minutes, he came back and he handed me his lota and said, Now you wash it with the dirt, soil, and water and put it back under the desk. So that was my very first service as his servant, was cleaning his lota, his bathroom lota, his spittoon, by following him. In two and a half years, I never had to clean the lota. All the Mataji's, Prabhupada would go on his walk and they'd be sh cleaning his sh fresh sheets every day, fresh bath towel every day, fresh flowers every day, you know, polishing the floors every day, wiping his desk. I never had to do it again, but it was the first thing he gave me to do. So to me, all these things were very, uh, they meant a lot. You know, look at the time, didn't think so, but looking back at it, I, I could understand what my position was, what my service was with him. Mm -hmm. I guess you thought about Russia when you saw that lota, that pastime, did, <laughs> did that enter your mind at the time? Well, I was just, it was just that lota, it was, I was just, the lota that had sweet rice in it, you know? The sweet rice. The sweet rice was our favorite, you know, New Vrindavan, sweet rice was... Oh, you had the cow, we died right? for this. Well, yeah, but that was Sundays, only mm -hmm. Sunday feast. Big, big, you know, milk container filled with sweet rice. You know, we lived on that sweet rice. It was the best sweet rice in the world, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, progressing a little bit on this, is, <clears throat> I thought we would have got the Guru Puja, but <laughs> you weren't there for that part. I mean, I, I understood as time went on, Prabhupada, of course, wanted to reemphasize that point that the spiritual master, especially him being the Acharya, yeah. was so important. Yeah. Therefore, uh, he introduced you know, Guru Puja and all these things. And well, think about it. Ram Navami, 1975, Prabhupada opened up Krishna Balaram Mandir. So you go to Krishna Balaram Mandir, Vyasasan's in the same spot. You have Prabhupada on the Vyasasan. And he would come in and as he did every day there, he would come in and do his dandavat, pranam, dandavats in front of Gornatai, him on the altar and his spiritual master, which he said, you put, put me and my spiritual master, they go on the altar with Gornatai. So Prabhupada had himself installed on the altar. Mm -hmm. This is how important it is for us to worship Srila Prabhupada in our society. He's everything. Everything, everything that happens is due to him. To this day and every day forward, anything we accomplish, we have to understand it's by his desire. 
And if we, if we keep that understanding, we can do so much. If we think we're doing something, you know, back in those days, right, how many times did you hear the lecture, Prabhupada talk about, again, become a mouse? Hmm? You know, and we, you know, I know I did, and I think most of us thought it applied to Terminal. other people. <laughs> it wasn't us, but he was telling us. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know the story, right? We yeah, all know yeah. that story, you know, I the mouse, the, story the just cat. Some people might be listening. Well, there's, there's the mouse, and he, he goes to the sadhu, you know, and, and says, I'm being harassed by this cat. You know, you please, you know. So then he... Sadhu says, okay. The guru turns him into a cat. And he says, well, I'm being harassed by the dog. He comes back again. He, okay. I'm being harassed by the dog, you know, by the tiger, right? The tiger. So he says, okay. Turns him into a tiger. And then he's a tiger. Then he's looking. You know, he's looking at the sadhu. He's looking at the guru. And he says, oh, you, you want to eat me? Yeah. Again, you become a mouse. <laughs> so that, you know, we would hear these things, don't jump over the spiritual master. That's what it means when you think over-intelligent. Look it up in the dictionary. I don't think you can find that word, over-intelligent. <laughs> That's a Prabhupadaism. Mm -hmm. But he very much understood. And, and so many, you know, a few of our Sanskrit scholars, <laughs> gone. They would look at Prabhupada's translation. They don't know which word should be like this. Look in Prabhupada, look in his books. Sometimes you'll see the word for word and then you see his translation. And they're two different things. <laughs> you know, Prabhupada had a devotional translation. Mm -hmm. That's what he gave us. He gave us Krishna. But some of these people, they thought they knew better. One, one in particular, you know, Prabhupada made a big example of him. Mm -hmm. he, he went to Prabhupada, imagine, in Vrindavan, and said, well, you know, you bless me to find a guru. <laughs> Prabhupada said to later, he said, just see, he's coming to me, I'm his guru, he's coming to me asking for a guru. I'm not qualified to be his guru, but he's coming to me asking for a guru. He said, just see the rascaldom, you know. Just see the rascaldom. But this is how one could be over-intelligent. And we see it, you know, we, we see it again and again and again. As soon as one thinks they have a better idea. Mm -hmm. The road show, Prabhupada closed it down. You know, he said, we're just simple kirtan people. All these things, he said, you... You bring them, he said, you entice people with this show, with this performance. He said, but ultimately they're going to see our business, is we just chant Hare Krishna. He said, then they'll go away. What is the point? Better from the start, they see our business is we chant Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. We're not performers, you know, we're not musicians. We're just devotees. Mm -hmm. So, one thing I've seen you know, Prabhupada, he would say things. You know, there was the, the three, you know, the three rule of three. So many times with Prabhupada, things with once, twice, three times. After three times, he never said it anymore. Mm. If you can't figure it out what he wants, you're never going to figure it out. So he would advise us what kirtan should be like, how we should dance, you know, and then he saw what we did and it he would just throw his hands up eventually. What was the point, you know? Because if he tells us, do like this, and you don't do it, that's a big offense. So he doesn't say it anymore. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to increase your offenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his allowing something to happen doesn't mean he endorsed it. Yeah. It means he gave up trying. And he just moved on. But his example, he showed us everything. How to chant Japa. How to lead Kirtan. How to dance. How to give class. Everything is there. But if we think we know better, different styles of classes, 
We could go on and on in different things that have changed so dramatically from when Prabhupada was here. You know, like he said, Lord Chaitanya was God. Lord Chaitanya, God, he said his kirtan was Murdanga cartel. He said if he wanted to add something, he would have added it. <laughs> Prabhupada had Murdanga cartel. That's what he said, our kirtan should be Murdanga cartel. Bhajan, he said, you can use harmonium. But then gradually he saw what was going on. Eh, what can I say? I've already said what to do. I already told everybody, shave your head, keep a clean shaven face. If you don't listen, what can be done? But he said some very extreme things. You keep long hair, have beard, you're not my disciple. Mm -hmm. Well, who, you know, you can't say that now. <laughs> watered, watered down. <laughs> what do you what do you feel now compared to back then? Does it seem like it's I feel less Krishna conscious, or is it going in the wrong tangent? It's it, it, it's very individual. Krishna yeah. consciousness is it's personal. You know, that's what I again I learned from Prabhupada, and I say again and again, everything is personal. You know, in New Dwarka, he would walk up his stairs after the morning walk. He'd walk up his stairs his flat, his apartment, we would say was on the first floor in India. In America, we'd say that was the second floor. <laughs> but anyway, he walk up his stairs. So one day he was walking up the stairs and he turns to me, he left her bead bag crying on the doorknob, crying. Another day walking up the stairs, who left the plate of prasadam crying on the table. So see, everything personal. In Juhu, one day, coming down the stairs to go on his morning walk, maybe 20, 20 devotees there, and everybody, boom, dandavats. There was one boy, he stood there with his hands folded. Prabhupada walking, he said that's the beginning of his fall down. Mm. Now, see, we take things cheaply, that's what sahaja means. I don't understand the reality. It's Krishna on the altar. Prabhupada's on the Vyasasan. It's real. It's not ritual. Mm -hmm. you know, Kirtan Ananda, one of the things he liked so much, making me Prabhupada's servant, was he said, I can write you to ask Prabhupada this question, that question. He figured he had an in <laughs> the inside man, and he did. Mm -hmm. You know, one day he wrote me. So, um, should we do our teak to the cows? So I'd go into Prabhupada, and I already knew, the, I didn't know anything, but I knew the answers <laughs> to these things. It was just, to me, it was common sense, you know. Mm. And I told Prabhupada, and he just shook his head. He said, tell them to brush them and, and shine their hooves. <laughs> we don't do Arctic to cows. They're cows. What are you doing, you know? And what was another one? He, had one, he sent me another letter one time. So when we're doing Arctic, and we're offering the items to the deities. He said, what should we meditate on? So, so I'd have to go and ask Prabhupada, <laughs> Kirtan Ananda, and he'd say, you're offering the incense, that's what you meditate. There's no special meditation. It's a, it's a real activity. Mm. You know, it's a real devotional activity. You're offering the water to bathe, you're drying them. It's reality. I say, all these things happen within the first month I was with Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. All these questions would come up, you know. Once in Vrindavan, Brahmachari. You know, what were we, 19, 18, 20, 22? You know, we were kids. Men, boys, you know, with our senses. You know, and the Prabhupada, you know, having trouble chanting my japa, you know. How do I control my mind? And I heard this one again and again, and Prabhupada always gave the same answer. He said, there's no question of mind. You chant with your tongue. He pointed. He said, you chant with your tongue, you hear with your ears. He literally bypassed what was in between, <laughs> the mind. Now we have Japa Retreat, Retreat. Part 1, Part 2, <laughs> Part 3, and they're meditating, thinking about this, thinking about this. And I always think the same thing. Prabhupada said, you just chant and you hear. 
And they said, well, what should I meditate on? Should I think of the past time? He said, you chant and you hear. So that's our problem. We don't hear. We hear and we think there's something else. There's some trick. There's no tricks. I think we want the problem. We want it now. Yeah. But it doesn't come that it fast. It doesn't come. It doesn't come, you I know. Mean, I, know. I used to do that in, when, in Pittsburgh. My first week, we had a picture of um, Virata Rupa, you know. The one, the one that uh, Jimi you Hendrix. That one. That one. Well, not with Jimi oh, Hendrix. God, <laughs> <laughs> with Bish, Bish, okay. no. With all that going back like that. Yeah. And I would sit there and chant my job and I'd look and I'd, I'd stare, I'd try not to even blink. And I was convinced if I chant hard enough and long enough and sincere enough and conscious, I'll see him moving, you know. And sometimes I saw him move. <laughs> So we wanted everything right away, and we still do, you know. And now it used to be just that was the American way, but now it's everywhere. You know, somebody sends you your WhatsApp message. If you don't answer in 30 seconds, they you know, send you another message. You know, why haven't you responded? You know, we live in an instant civilization. Everything has to be instantly. Yeah, yeah. Prabhupada's method was, you know, slow but sure. Take yeah. prasadam, chant Hare Krishna and follow the routine. He called it the routine program, which meant the morning program, the routine. Routine in English, it's a word, that's what it means, it's routine. You know, it, it doesn't seem very special, but for Prabhupada, that routine was the very essence, the foundation of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can also <clears throat> kind of relate to that idea in the beginning that, you know, I'm saying these mantras and why am I not feeling these things yet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, but then, you know, what, at least for myself, I begin to realize, why am I chanting this japa? I'm chanting because Prabhupada asked me to. So let me do it <laughs> for his pleasure. Yes. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter whether I like it or not, Prabhupada asked me to do this. So let me do it to the best of my ability and just he say and hear the mantra. He mentioned that in class this morning. We take vows, and the vows are there. So we, mm -hmm. we follow that, you know, to please Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, then that, from that level... We become steady. And that's a sign of advancement in Krishna consciousness, that steadiness. Prabhupada did the same thing. Chanted his 16 rounds, he was rise early in the morning, you know, went on his morning walk, gave class... Everything he told us to do, he was doing. Mm -hmm. He not only translated his books, he read his books. Every afternoon, he read from his books. Every afternoon. Sometimes he would do bhajan in his room. The afternoon was his time. You know, the morning, so many things, a whole morning program, class, greeting the mm -hmm. deities, Guru Puja. Then he'd have his breakfast. Then he would meet with the temple devotees, the leaders. Then he had massage. During massage, very often, he would get the mail read to him by his secretary, and he would dictate responses. While he's being so massaged. even while he was getting massage, he was that was a good time for the mail. And at the same time, the Sanskrit editor would come in with his questions. So it wasn't he just sat there and got a massage. There was a lot going on. You know, while I was doing the massage, Sanskrit editors in and out the door. Hmm. Secretaries in and out the door. Yeah, that kind of leads to another question. I hate to come off this subject you're going into now, but that routine Prabhupada had that he he was very regulated in what he did. He didn't break from that. No, no matter where he was. As he traveled around the world, no. We could fly for 22 hours, arrive in Delhi two in the morning, six in the morning. He was on his walk. Because that's what he did at we six. Were, we were wiped, well, depending on when the sun was coming oh, up, okay. but the average time was about six in the morning. So no matter what, he would do that. Mm -hmm. When we were in Zurich, Switzerland, we went to San Moritz, and there was a blizzard going on. He went on his morning walk. Mm -hmm. so it was very, very regulated. Yeah, that seemed to be a very important point we lose. Because I always thought, like say for instance, I'm going to, complete Bhagavatam. I just put eight, nine, ten hours a day into it <laughs> no, <laughs> and get well, it done. Well, he, he, he had, didn't do like that. He had his he time had, period of doing it and that was it. Yeah. In Hawaii, he sometimes spent all day translating. In the daytime. 
Yeah, he would translate in the day because there he was in a, sp no one was there. Okay. So he had the time to do it. But that, you know, that was, he was spinning many, many tops. You know, when we were mm -hmm. kids, we had the tops. Prabhupada had a lot of tops to spin. Why he would kept vi traveling all around the world. He had to keep everybody fired up. You know, and get back there before the spinning stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it was like. That's how I saw things. Mm -hmm. I saw the temples as book warehouses. You know, he had book warehouses all around the world, and he had his, his salesmen, his book distributors. Most important activity, you know, to this day. Most important activity. Whatever else goes on, those books go out there. You know, we might come and go. We might be here one day, go on the next, but the books, they're forever. And they can change people's lives in a moment. That, that, that competition, that spirit that Prabhupada kind of took advantage of, because, you know, we're Americans, we're mm -hmm. always Competitive. competing. He used that, yeah. Did, I mean, did you hear him comment about that, or did he consciously do that, or I don't know if you were... Yeah, he said it was healthy competition. He didn't like the... Um, Kirtan competitions. I was going to bring that was the in, next thing my, That he didn't like. But book competition he liked. And of course you would say it's a transcendental. Not that we would become jealous of. We were jealous. Though. <laughs> <laughs> we were a little jealous. bit of jealousy. Oh, a, was lot of bit. a little bit was okay. I look at that newsletter. What the? Yeah, he, oh my God. I he can't... pitted one against the other to, <laughs> to increase the distribution. <laughs> when he came to Chicago. Because you know he couldn't visit all the temples. Mm -mm. So how can I avoid going to Chicago? Look how many books they sold. Yeah. And they brought all the different temples. And I can remember looking on the other side at the other temples. We go, yeah, yeah, we, we defeated you guys. He came to our temple. <laughs> Vrindavan Temple now is number three. Oh. Yeah. Our little Vrindavan. Oh, India, so you can't compete with India. So. Yeah. Yes. They give out. Over thirty like thousand Bibles to Christians, you know. <laughs> over thirty thousand plates of kitri every day they yeah. give out now. At Vrindavan Temple is so so busy here in Mayapur. You see, so busy. Mm -hmm. and Prabhupada wanted this. He said, if these people just come here, take a little prasadam, offer their obeisances to the deities, he said, their lives will change. You mm. know, just by doing that, they can guarantee themselves. A, human life just by bowing down before the deities you know one thing i one thing i understood also Prabhupada's vision of time was much different than mine you know mm -hmm. and and maybe many of us is you know for us everything was now 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 it's got to happen now mm -hmm. but he saw things over the course of years decades generations he's putting things into motion now yeah for he later. put it into motion and just, we may not even be here to see just it just like the tovp you know Prabhupada mm -hmm. envisioned that still we're waiting for the completion how many years later you know almost 50 years later so he thought you know bhaktivinoda thakur predicted but it took 100 Some years whatever <laughs> 50 you know 60 70 before Prabhupada was able to do the next each one did, did a certain you know, a certain step along the way. Mm -hmm. And is what I, I, I think also was, as soon as the possibility of travel around the world became possible for, for just regular people, commercial airlines, you know, in the beginning it wasn't like that, you know. But as soon as it became something that could be done, Prabhupada was doing it. He was there doing it. Mm -hmm. 1966, 67, you know, the first flight from New York to San Francisco. And then air travel just became a commonplace thing. And he used it to the max. It's almost like it's a Christian's arrangement. Sometimes I explain yeah. to people that, you know, this technology seems like all these things are here for the karmis, but actually it's for spreading Christian consciousness. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. how could it have happened? You know, how you can get a, you know, a book for $5. Mm -hmm. Imagine in, back in the Lord Chaitanya's time, you couldn't even see a copy. You had to do it by hand. Yeah. And it would probably fill up a box, you know, thing. And every town and village, how would that be possible without uh, air travel? No one could even get outside, you know, the in village. The, uh, out of their village, <laughs> what to speak of, out of the country. Yeah. But as soon as it was possible, he was the person who created.
Krishna gave to do it. That's our Prabhupada. Even that, that I, I dare say, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, that first flight to Calcutta, international flight, somehow or another, I hear, I think Ramachar arranged for it. It was mm. a flight full of devotees. Mahendra. Can you imagine that? Mahendra. Oh, Mahendra arranged. Chartered. Well, yeah, he worked under, he was, Ramachar, I guess, was the, overall manager. Mahendra, though, he was the contact, I know, when I wanted books, when I had to pay for books, we were dealing with Mahendra, but he arranged those first charter flights. You know flights. how he did that? Because that's a cool, I mean, no. they just decided we're going to fly. Again, I was with Prabhupada at the time, catch. so I wasn't on those. I thought maybe someone might have mentioned it to Prabhupada, because Prabhupada had to be, a, he was aware of that too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. You were with him at that time? Yeah. Did, what comments did he make about that? Well, I, <laughs> again, you know, you know I was a 75, which was, to me, I considered that Mayapur, 500 devotees. That was yeah. the first big, 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 big festival. Well, it was just the Lotus Walk building around, the time. ring the bell in the Lotus yeah. building. You know, and out of 500 devotees, maybe there were four or five Indians. You know, we were <laughs> all, everybody from the West, you know, Europe, America, Australia. South America, whatever it was, you know. So that was... Prabhupada's greatness, he brought them all to Mayapur. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I remember that period too coming and I was shocked because I just assumed all Indians, that's up to Krishna, well, but they uh, didn't. <laughs> see what happened, and, and I, I've mentioned it sometimes. That time from February 1975, Prabhupada left Juhu, Mumbai, we say Bombay. And in two months, he traveled around the world. From, from there, he went to Japan. Then he went to Hawaii. Then he went to Los Angeles, exact places. Then he went to Mexico City. Then he went to Caracas. Then he went to Miami. He yeah. said Miami, he mentioned. Mm -hmm. Then he went to Atlanta. Then he went to Dallas. Then he went to Bhaktivedanta Manor. He went to England. Then he went to Tehran. And then he went back to Mayapur in two months' time. And every temple he went to, for the most part, he went into ecstasy on the Vyasasan. Why? Because my conclusion is because he saw he had done it. Oh. And, he, and he would. He would mention Lord Chaitanya when he was in Caracas. He said, he's traveled very far to be with you. It was Prabhupada was doing this. In two months, he went to a dozen temples and went around the world in two months' time. At the age of 79 years old, let's see what we're doing at 79 years old, you know, to be able. But he was in ecstasy. He went into the ecstasy in Mexico City. He went into ecstasy in Caracas on the Vyasasam, which means he went silent. He closed his eyes, it might have been in the middle of a lecture, it might have been at the kirtan, but he would just close his eyes and external consciousness wasn't there. Then he did it in Miami, again mentioning Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, then famously in, in Atlanta, Atlanta, most I mean, Atlanta famous. Atlanta came to a head. Yeah, it came to a head in Atlanta. You can talk about that. He huh? spoke for two minutes. Paramakaruna, he said, the two lords. He said, the most merciful. He saw those, you know those deities, very, very powerful. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. He said, the two lords, he said, they're very merciful. He said, distributing love of God freely. And then he said, Krishna is also merciful. He said, but he requires surrender. And he's choked up as he requires surrender. Then he just choked up and stopped, right? And we all just sat there motionless, right? We didn't even breathe. We didn't want to make any sound. No japa, no nothing. Just sat there. Then he would open his eyes and say, Chan Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. The shortest lecture I say he ever gave, literally two minutes. It's recording is there. You can hear it. It's, it's there. You can hear it on whatever, the internet, Breaking YouTube. Breaking up when he's talking. Breaking up in tears. But that's, you know, I mean, I don't know internally what he was doing, but but what I could understand was he was in extreme ecstasy seeing he did it. And he didn't take credit for doing it. He literally would say, Lord Chaitanya has done. But he had done. 
And then when he got to Mayapur, he said it. They were saying, Prabhupada, you did, you know, this building, lotus building so beautiful and everything is so nice. And Prabhupada just said, well, it's, you know, Krishna has done. I had an idea, but Krishna has done. And then they said so many, he asked all the devotees, are they okay? He said, everybody's comfortable. Jaipataka said, everybody's very comfortable, Prabhupada, by your, by your mercy. And then he said, not my mercy. He said, Bhakti Vinod Thakur wanted. He said, he predicted that someone would come who would spread this Krishna consciousness. And then he said, I may be that person. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as he said it, he changed the subject and said, are you planting banana trees? He mentioned the <laughs> specific, because he wouldn't let us discuss it. Mm -hmm. But he gave that one time. So that was what I saw, was that Prabhupada was, he was just in so much ecstasy to see people were chanting Hare Krishna all over the world. And now people were chanting from all over the world in Mayapur. He did it. It happened which no one thought could happen. No one else thought it could happen. He did, and his Guru Maharaj did, and his before him did, but none of his godbrothers thought. Every, they say Vaishnavas just thought it was some poetic thing, Lord Chaitanya said, every town and village. But Prabhupada made it happen, and he still makes it happen. If we have to know that. The more we know that, the more we can do. Otherwise, you become a mouse again. If you think you're doing something on your own and you're not going to last very long, if you think, I've done, I've done, I've done, what can we do? Were you there for any of those conversations with some of his godbrothers in Mayapur? Sridhar Maharaj. Or in English or Bengali? He started out in English. We went again at that time. It might have been the one in 73. And uh, he went to Navadweep to his his mat and Shudar, so across the river. Yeah, Shudar Maharaj was outside on, like on the veranda in, in his bed. I always remember he had little katuris under each post in the bed, you know, with water to keep the bugs from crawling up into the bed. <laughs> and Prabhupada told him so much. So much preaching is going on. So many books, he said. We're distributing so many Bhagavad Gita, Srima Bhagavatam. He said, and we're getting $10. Marupa was proud. He said, we're getting $10 a book. He said, isn't that right, Sutta Kirti? I'm sitting on the floor. Yes, Prabhupada, yes. <laughs> and then he said, um, he said, but come and join me. He said, you go to America. He said, Chicago, Detroit, wherever. He said, you go there. He said, and you can help train up my men. He said, I have so many disciples, but I, you know, they need, they need to be trained. He said, and I'm traveling all around the world. He said, I'll set you up in the temple there. He said, and Sruta Kirti will be your servant. He said, isn't that right, Sruta Kirti? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Prabhupada. And I'm thinking, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, Sridhar Maharaj said, maybe next life. Next life. That's what he said, maybe next life. And then Prabhupada started talking in Bengali. But that part he did in English. Mm -hmm. So I got to hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then later, 75, he brought. Sridhar Maharaj came to Mayapur, right? There's some famous photos. Mayapur. You see them sitting together on the Vyasasan. And for us, that was like, wow, you know. <laughs> that was an amazing thing. I remember seeing where Prabhupada was giving them all some money. Yeah, well, that's yeah, the common practice. Yeah, got to give a little something. Being from America, I didn't, never thought about it in that way. <laughs> it yeah. was like, you know, well, we don't have that, that culture. That's, that's something we, yeah, we should we don't learn. Have that culture. You know, anytime somebody comes and does, you have to give something, you know. Uh, anytime somebody comes. Is it just because you're saying yes or because of? Some, some reciprocation should be there. That's Vaishnavism. You know? uh, there's, there's different things we could use to learn, you know, how Vaishnavas deal with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another question would be if you, I don't know if you were thinking about it at the time, but maybe in retrospect, and I think Sri Papa realized that he didn't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I think really around 67, 68, he probably thought that was going to be the end of what he was doing. He always so all this other stuff was, you know, what he, the time he had after was extra. 
Yeah, he always said any time I could be gone, any time. He always knew that potential was there as, as it is for us. Any moment we could be gone. So he would say that very often, any time. But, it, but it's shocking to me in the fact that, well, I wouldn't say the fact, but <clears throat> of course around that time when Prabhupada left his body, most of us assume that there's no way... He'd be gonna, here to 100. That's no, what he I, has to finish the Bhagavatam. Yeah. So there's no way Krishna can... Because who can do it besides him? Yeah, well. So it was shocking. It was, yes, it was a to big... That. I mean, you never got the sense of... But then again, like you mentioned now, we realize now, we see the Bhagavatam was completed. When, potency is still there in the book. It's not like everything was lost. I was, I was with him in Vrindavan in September of 77. And at that time, he was already... Just skin and bones, but I never thought he was leaving. I still really, yeah, I still Why? couldn't uh, because because we needed him. Didn't yeah, but he was. When you, now we look back, he was. I was surprised yeah, he was alive. He was, he was already gone practically. But but many of us, I wasn't the only one. We thought it wasn't possible for him to leave because we were just children. You know, we were children, and Krishna wouldn't do that. You know? Why would Krishna do, wouldn't yeah, do, do that, that to us? You know, when Prabhupada was ready to stay, but he, he would always say, how, what was the prayer? He said, he said to you, um, my dear Lord Krishna, if it is Just your desire. Saves you. He never said, my dear Lord Krishna, please keep Srila Prabhupada with us. That wasn't what he told us to say. It was, my dear Lord Krishna, if it is your desire, please cure or whatever it was, Srila Prabhupada. So that was the final, you yeah. know. And where were you when he uh, left his body? Hawaii. I was a temple president. Uh, I was outside somewhere, and I got a phone call. Prabhupada had left. I drove back to the temple. I drove right into the lava rock wall coming into the temple. I was so disoriented and just, you know, didn't know what to do. As many of us yeah, were just yeah. crushed, crushing. Shocking. Crushing, and still... You know, now we're still left with, as he said, <laughs> you know, it's one thing, you know, Vani and Vapu, we, we all know Vani and Vapu, but, you know, for so many, when Prabhupada left, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't manage to stay. And, and even for myself, you know, but I do feel, you know, that's what I say now, I can feel closer, you know, engaged in the service in this Vrindavan temple, his home. I can feel closer to him than when I was massaging him. Mm -hmm. You could be a million miles away. So, you know, it is vital. Again, like you were emphasizing the <clears throat> the mood we had then, of course, is what can, is continuing this movement now that we're doing this for Srila Prabhupada and that's why he established he is the Acharya. This is the ultimate Shiksha. Preeminent Shiksha Guru. Yeah, yeah, we so say these things, but then to actually act on that platform is another yeah. is another thing. We can say it and we can make the words, but and it's actions. Yeah. Actions are what count, not not words. Not bless me, bless me, bless me, as we hear in India all the time. And you know, Prabhupada say he's given all the blessings are there got to follow follow the program you know and you know myself i i've had my my ups and downs and All now things. but i'm in vrindavan i'm in Prabhupada's home and i'm just trying to do a little service you know by his by his grace by his compassion and it's available for all of us mm -hmm. you just have to just have to take it you know you just have to take the mercy and and know it's mercy right it's so all we're nothing without the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. It's all we're made of is His mercy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Srila yeah. Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai. Thank you.